What's up, gang? It's Ken Zerk, Ken Zilling, it's Ika Milligan, the villain from the Trinity, and we are back on Fate Stay Night. Last episode, we got our first wrong in, but basically, Saber went out, we met the assassin, and we basically kind of confirmed that Mato, or what, what, is, what was his name, Shinji? Yeah, we basically confirmed that Shinji was, was lying to us. He was trying to get us killed. Last episode, I skipped the Tiger Dojo, but y'all kind of wanted to see it. <laughs> so, this better be funny. You imbecile! What is Ilya doing here? Imbecile! <laughs> Hold on. What the hell are you thinking going out there when her wounds haven't even healed yet? You just became a master, so you need to train a bit more. That's right. You might not be able to avoid me killing you, but letting that vixen kill you is so uncool. Hurry back to your previous choice and stay home tonight. That's right. Make sure you think real hard in that in the real heart. Oh shit. Make sure you think real hard and next time choose more carefully. Well now. Your friendly Tiger Dojo, which welcomes you with open arms despite your stupid mistakes and entering his third episode already. Everyone might be getting used to this dojo by now. They're not. This is my first time seeing this shit. Are they really? What are you trying to get at, Tiger? Is there something you want to say? Yes. Actually, I'm sure everyone is starting to wonder by now. About what? Uh, then I'm going to say it. Don't you think wearing gym shorts is a little on the nose? What does that mean? Isn't this a dojo? I'm gonna be working out, so I'm just wearing gym shorts. Why do they look like that? <laughs> they don't look as detailed. I see, so that's why. I guess that makes sense. I just thought it was sort of a scheme a naughty girl like you would come up with to steal what little thunder I have. She's not stealing shit from me, that's a child. You're thinking way too much about this, Taiga. You and I are on completely different levels. I don't have to be dressed to the nines to beat someone like you. Damn. Oh, you're right. You and I are treated very differently and there's no need to compete with each other. Good, good. We're going to be BFFs. A gym uniform is a sign of energetic vitality. So I'll allow you to keep wearing it. Was she not throwing shade? Obviously. Well, you can count your blessings that I'm not in a maid outfit or a school swimsuit. I was actually thinking of wearing different outfits every time, you know? Ah. What's with the obvious special treatment? I'm not jealous. That idea got nixed anyway. You and I are on an even playing field. But I'm a little curious. What other outfits were you planning on wearing? Uh, things like a boy school uniform, Kamakura style outfit, a grown up me version, a snowman, an apron, a kimono, a German style military officer uniform. I would, I would like to see that, honestly. Lo and behold, there are supposed to be 40 different variations. I've heard enough. Your blessed love is too much. I hate it. I also kind of want to see the military uniform, so I'm a little disappointed in that. Hey, we're on the same wavelength. Yeah, I think it would be childish to change something that's already been decided. I totally agree. What would the developers think and get rid of my root? Do they just hate money? There was no root even planned for you. What, what the fuck is... What? Meow? Yeah, you scoundrel, get back here! What the fuck am I watching? <laughs> oh, hey there, Ren. Well, just take it easy. And she's gone. And Tiger's out cold. So maybe I should head back too. Go get your stamping, okay. I'll see you at the next dead end. What the fuck did y'all just make me watch? Actually, what the fuck did y'all just make... I'm not watching that shit ever again. <laughs> nah, I'm fucking around. That was funny. 
What the fuck? That was so stupid. <laughs> ah. Oh, that's cold. I love it. Chapter seven or day seven. I think there's 12 days in this shit. Bitches smell like money. February 6th. Fate. Day seven. Sword and magic. One. I wouldn't want anyone to get sad if I can help it. If I just use my own limited powers to make the world around me happy, the world would be a better place. That was always Kirisugu's favorite saying. The man who I saw as a champion of justice was saying he thought he was a failure, that he wasn't good enough. He didn't need to explain it to me. The world... The worlds the young me and grown up Kiritsugu lived in were too different, so the standards for being a hero of justice were different too. When I was young, this house was my entire world. So my old man, Fujine, myself, and my favorite shed were the only things I needed protecting. All I thought I had to protect was what I could see around me, but Kiritsugu wanted to do something for those he couldn't see or reach. I was reckless when I was young. I built myself up by cursing the cruel world. The world was cruel, so I became cruel as a way to make my ideals a reality. There will always be those who can't be saved. You just can't save everything. If in the process of trying to save a thousand, you overlook 500, then I will abandon 100 to save 900. That is the most efficient way. That is the ideal, Kiritsugu once told me. Of course I got mad hearing that. It really ticked me off. Cause I didn't I didn't have to be told this since I knew already. Because I knew firsthand that it was the very ideal, that very ideal that led to me being saved. I didn't need to be reminded about something so obvious. But I still believed that a hero of justice could save everyone despite those limitations. Because that's what a hero of justice was. Someone who could still perform miracles, no matter how idealistic or unattainable they may be. I thought I could record like at least an hour without eating yet. I'm about to go make something to eat. I'm hungry. I feel like I'm lost in the forest when I tell them niggas bear with me. Be the taxi nigga ass and got the fair with me. Made an omelet. You're not getting a nigga out of me. You're not getting a nigga out of me. <laughs> Darn be thou. Darn be thou that think he can fool me and take my money. Arr, arr, arr. I'm gonna fuck this nigga up. If you think you're getting a nickel out of me, son, then you ought to be damned. I will fuck you. Daddy's back. I didn't need to be reminded about something so obvious, but I still believe that a hero of justice could save everyone, despite those limitations, because that's what a hero of justice was. Someone who could still perform miracles, no matter how idealistic or unattainable they may be. You're right, Shiro. Results are the most important thing. But apart from that, what's even more important is to have the heart. What did Kiritsuku say about heart again? I don't remember. It's not often I reminisce about something from so long ago. I must be in a deep sleep. Otherwise, I wouldn't be dreaming in the first place. Shiro, wake up. It's almost time for breakfast. See? Saber's waking me up. It's pathetic. What? I bolt right up and out of my futon. It's 6.30 in the morning. Fresh sunlight pours in from outside. Shiro, it is morning. Do you need to prepare breakfast? Saber's staring right at me. Ah, shit, I overslept. Sorry, I'll get up right away. You have nothing to apologize for, but you have no time to relax. It appears Sakura and Rin were arguing earlier. The fuck are y'all fighting about? Sakura and Tosaka arguing? Fuck is going on? Hold on, don't throw me into a situation I don't understand since I'm waking up. Uh, is that happening in Tosaka's room? No, the living room. I just passed by, so I do not know the details. Uh, got it. I'll head there now. 
the fuck what I got what the fuck y'all want me to do about this shit? And tell them to act like some fucking grown-ups. Oh, but there's something I forgot to do. What is it, Shiro? Good morning, Saber. Thanks for waking me. I greet her, then I head out to the hallway. What a sweetheart. But seriously, what the fuck did the what the fuck until Sakura do to start an argument with Sakura? Tosaka! Tosaka! In the living room, there's no sign of Sakura, so Sakura is alone, casually watching the weather forecast on TV. Morning. What a way to start the morning, shouting my name like that. She turns around as if something as if to ask if something had happened. Huh? That's weird. It doesn't look like she was fighting with Sakura at all. Uh, I'm mourning. Hey, Tosaka, I heard you and Sakura were arguing. Is that true? Huh? Oh, from Saber. Yeah, I may have seen that way to an outside observer, but it was nothing. I just told her not to come here for a while. She's so casual about basically banning Sakura from my house. That's ridiculous. Sakura already said no to staying away from this house. There's no way she would agree even if we asked again. She wouldn't agree, but she went home after I presented her with a compromise. I told her I would go back home without argument if she stays away for a week. She agreed to those terms. She went home. Even if she was a little reluctant. Oh, right. She sends her regards. You did what? Why would she do something like that without telling me? Actually, I shouldn't yell at her for it. So Sokka just done something I should have. You're right. Sorry for making you the bad guy so early in the morning. You must feel terrible. Uh, no, it wasn't bad or unpleasant to me. Why would you think that, Shiro? Uh, because weren't you and Sakura friends? Telling Sakura to leave not once but twice doesn't sound like a fun job. That's why I feel bad. I'm the one who should have took charge. But I made you do the dirty work again. That's fine. I just kicked out Sakura for my own safety. There's no need for you to apologize. Huh? What do you mean for your own safety? Well, you said Shinji's a master, right? Knowing him, if Shinji finds out Sakura comes here, he'll target this place. So it's best to keep Sakura away from here until we finish dealing with Shinji. Yeah, we're gonna have to kill her fucking brother. I'm looking forward to that shit, though. I want that nigga dead. I get it. She makes a good point. Shinji said he doesn't tell Sakura anything. I don't think he was lying. But if he finds out his little sister comes here so often, he might get the wrong idea. You're right. It could look to Shinji like we're taking Sakura hostage. Exactly. But more importantly, this place is still dangerous. I wouldn't want her to be walking around at night, so it's best for her to stay away from here for a while. It's for Sakura's own safety as well as ours. Yeah, you're right. I feel bad for Sakura, but I'll just have to apologize and ask her forgiveness later. I won't be able to explain myself even when the time comes. This is really getting to me. I feel really bad about turning Sakura away like this, even if it's temporary. She's been so unselfish about helping me for all this time. Oh, you look really down. What happened to all that energy you had when you shouted at me earlier? Are you all sad and lonely not having Sakura around? So Sakura grunts maliciously. Think I'm gonna have to beat the fuck out of her. Ah, oh, crap. I've known she teased me whenever she, whenever I show vulnerability, but I went and did it again. <laughs> fuck off! Sakura was a similar piece at our house. She offset whatever Fujine and I were lacking, so of course I'm down about us sending her away for her own selfish reasons. Oh, so you do understand. If you can say that much, then you pass. I say you're starting to get more determined. What are you trying to say? Don't you get it? Once this war ends, Sakura will come back. You say you don't want the Holy Grail, but that just means you should fight to take back the peaceful life you had before. See, now you have a clear goal. So Sakura smiles, her very biggest smile. Her very big... Fuck that sentence structure. 
When she puts it like that, I really have no choice but to agree. Let one of you motherfuckers go in the comments talking about my hair. Let one of you motherfuckers go in the comments talking about my hair. Y'all gon' y'all ain't gonna never see another damn video from me again. Damn, I don't know what to say. What she said confirms there that, that she's both mean spirited and ridiculously awesome at the same time. I love Tosaka. She pisses me the hell off. I love Tosaka. What? Tosaka will be coming here for a while? Yeah, that's what's going on. Why don't you do your parents a favor and go home once in a while for a change? Gramps was complaining about his daughter neglecting him. Leave dad out of this. He's not gonna die or anything whether I'm there or not. And with Sakura gone, I have to be even more vigilant. You're still a boy, so if anything fishy happens here, I'll be the one who gets in trouble even if e and even loses their job. If that happens, are you gonna take responsibility, Shiro? That'll never happen. Sadly, since I'm a man, I can't really confidently deny that. If shit goes down, I might have to fuck some I might I might have to fuck some bitches, but you know. Emiya, why'd you just stop? She glares. Tosaka's eyes bore into me from one side. I don't think anything would happen. Look, Tosaka's not staying here for fun, you know, alright? So she ain't she ain't gonna be busting shit down on me sexual style, so don't worry about that. I sure know that. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Sounds like Emiya is trustworthy, Miss Fujimura. Of course. Even from my point of view, Shiro is really composed. So much he might be overdoing it. Saber continues to eat in silence as she observes the two interacting. She just like. What are they talking about? <laughs> the fuck is my issue? It's been two days, but I don't think I'll ever get used to this shit. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Shiro, it's about the Kudo Club. Did you hear Misuzuri got hurt? Misuzuri? Did she pick a fight with someone in another club again? Honestly, she really needs to calm down. She's gonna be a third year soon. So how's she doing? Is she hurt bad? No, she's fine. She just sprained her ankle. Apparently she was attacked by some shady guy on her way home. It's fucking Mato, damn it. You know she runs fast. She made a mad dash, but it sounds like she fell and got hurt. I see. I'm glad nothing bad happened. But honestly, whoever tried to attack her is either a real daredevil or that's just reckless. Either way, they were a fool. I just thought... You thought she would have knocked the corporate out rather than run. Fujine grins. Yeah, she sure knows Ayako well. Yeah, it's rare for Misa Zuri to run away. But I guess she's not so tough against thieves. I suppose things worked out for the best. Something like that will probably teach her a thing or two about being feminine. I munch on my rice nodding approvingly. Hey, Emiya. Suddenly. Rento Saka slaps my shoulder, smiling at me. I have some news for you. Huh? What? I doubt it'll be more interesting than what I just heard. Yeah, I never mentioned this before, but Aiko and I are real good friends. Did you know we're close enough that we hang out on the weekends? Okay. Wait. Why is she and Misa Zuri friends? Come again? Oh, don't worry. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna make sure I tell her every single word you just said. I'm sure. I'm sure if I tell her about how happy Emiya was to, when he heard about her predicament, why I bet she'll break ten stacks of tiles from sheer delight. I would like to amend my statement. See, it was just a figure of speech. Like, it's not something I'd be proud if people heard. Like, so I, I'm really. I really appreciate if you kept that shit to yourself. Like, you're overdoing this type shit. Oh, really? Well, like, I, I could keep quiet about it, but it would be really hard for me to do that unless there was, like, maybe something in it for me. Like, I, I might accidentally slip up, you know? I need motivation. 
I can't believe this. You sound sincere, but I'm not buying it. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't get me wrong. I'm not playing around here, nigga. Yeah, there's no misunderstanding here. She's enjoying this shit. Got it. I'll start making Western style breakfasts from now on. Fucking dip shit. You said earlier you mentioned that breakfast should have bread. Good. I think I have some jams apart from marmalade. I think some jams apart from marmalade would be nice. Like strawberry jam. I don't know what you have against Japanese breakfast, you foreigner wannabe. Can't believe you would radically change your breakfast just to suit your needs, you fucking tyrant. That is not entirely true. I would also be pleased to have bread served at breakfast. Soft boiled eggs would also be an excellent addition. Saber jumps right into the discussion. Is that so? Fine, you all just want western style food, damn it! Sakura makes a western style breakfast one time and it grows right to your fucking ass! Alright, fuck all of you! I work so damn hard and y'all are so fucking ungrateful. Fine then, I'll serve breakfast for tomorrow. No more complaints, right? So what was said here stays here. Don't you dare blab about this to me, Suzuri. I huff and I puff and I blow the fucking house down. Then I shove rice into my mouth without looking at either of them. Fucking assholes. And then... Why would you be doing something so pointless? Fujin who has been watching our conversation with a look of wonderment. It's not a fucking word. Finally speaks up. What? What do you mean pointless? Even though Sosaki isn't gonna say anything, I'm gonna tell Misazuri anyway. No way I would pass up talking about something so interesting. You, you traitor! Fujine shakes her head disapprovingly as she eats. Actually, I need to think of a way to deal with her or I'm really in trouble. Breakfast ends and it's 7.30. Fujine surprisingly stays back and suggests that the three of us walk to school. But we can't do that shit. I made a decision last night. Now that I've said I won't rely on Saber, I can't afford to take it easy anymore. Oh yeah, we got a train. Then let's go. Did you lock up, Shira? No, I don't worry about locking up. I'm not going to school today. I wave Fujine and Tosaka off. Fujine freezes, stupefied for just a few seconds. What? What do you mean you're not going to school? Tosaka beat Fujine to the chase. That's, that's right. You don't look sick enough to miss school today, Shiro. No, my scar hurts. You know how scars hurt when the weather changes? It's like that. You're lying, Shiro. Yeah, but let me off the hook for today. It's not like I don't like school. This is something I have to do, and it's more important right now, so let me go. Fuck off. Hop off my dick. Oh, come on. How can I respond if you're going to put it like that? You always cagey when you have something really important to take care of. Fujine is complaining, but at least she understands. So there it is. I'll leave school to you. I'll leave school to you, Sosaka. Okay. Not much is gonna change just because you're not there. That's not a bad idea, Emiya. You're not that fucking useful. Yeah, leave the house with me. I'm not going to work for a while either, so I won't be leaving the house much. Got it. Then I'm heading out, Shiro. If you're gonna skip school because you're hurt, you shouldn't leave the house much. Just fucking said that. Well, see you. I'm giving you a pass a day, but you're gonna have to discuss with me. Discuss it. Fuck! Well, see you. I'm giving you a pass a day, but you're gonna have to discuss this with me beforehand next time. Shut your ass up. What the fuck I wanna do? I look like your, I look like your son, nigga. I should probably clean the floors. I told Saber to meet me here a little later. I always just do the bare minimum of cleaning in here. It's been years since I sparred with anyone in this place. It'd probably be rude to both the dojo and Saber if I don't clean up a little. But honestly, I don't know what she's gonna do for sword training. 
I sparred using a Shenai with Kirisugo many times, but Kirisugo and I never really cared about proper form. It was more like a couple of amateurs beating each other up. I never really had any plans to practice Kendo seriously, and I was really only taught how to fight opponents wielding a sword. I've never been keen on using tools in a fight. My interest was always making and fixing them. In that sense, this might be the first time for me to learn proper swordsmanship in any serious sense. Saber swordsmanship is different from Kendo, but I'm sure there are some things in common, and I don't think they're so different I won't be able to keep up. I hear the door open. Saber arrives precisely on time. That works so well since I've just finished cleaning. Sorry I made you wait. I was thinking of having you teach me here. Yes, it's something to matter, Shiro. You look like you have just seen something unusual. Oh, it's nothing. I was just surprised you're still in your same clothes. Thought you were going to wear your other outfit. We're training with swords, so I immediately thought of Saber and her armor. Since that's what she always wears when she's fighting. You are not that much of a threat, little nigga. Huh. If you prefer me armored, I can change. You are right, I was not thinking. Even should we only be practicing, I'm disrespecting you by not wearing my armor. My apologies, I will change right away. Oh, no, nah, that's not what I meant. I just misunderstood. It's fine, I actually prefer you in this outfit to your armor. Are you not saying my outfit is unsatisfactory? Unsatisfactory? I mean, you don't look like you dressed for a bout right now, but it shouldn't matter as long as you're comfortable. Wearing armor all day will just tire you out. That may be true, but don't you think this is an inappropriate look for wielding a sword? Why would you think that? It's not weird, you look good, you bad as fuck. I think you look better right now than you do in your armor. Hold on, that nigga trying to lay down the game. He trying to teach her the rules to the game and get up in them jays. Hold on. I do not quite understand. This outfit is certainly easy to move in, but it is ill suited for combat. I believe this is an adequate look for a saber. Hey, don't you dare wear that outfit in the fight, dumbass. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? Don't you dare wear that outfit in the fight, dumbass. You're a girl, Saber. Girls look good in outfits like this, so this is fine. This nigga really has a box about what girls are. <laughs> Hold on, that's a new look. And then, I return the rag I've been cleaning with the fuck. I return the rag I've been cleaning with the fuck. I return the rag I've been cleaning with to the bucket. And I bring back two Shenna that I that, that have been leaning against the wall. So what are you planning for training, Saber? I'm leaving everything to you to decide. So tell me anything, no matter how absurd it might be. Hold on, y'all fucking with the shirt? This shit hard, ain't it? This shit... This shit hard, ain't it? I fucking love Asa. I toss her the bamboo sword. Hold on, she blushing this shit? She blushing this shit? She fucking with your boy? Saber seemed distracted as she catches the shin and stares at me quietly. Huh? Is there a problem with bamboo swords? Don't tell me you want to use what? No, no, not real blades. Come on now. She's really a tough instructor. This is beyond anything I imagined. Oh, no. These are certainly excellent mock swords for practice sessions, so let us use them. Saber drops in a deep breath, deep breath, and goes right back to being the normal Saber as I know her. That's a relief. It'd be too noisy to spar with wooden swords. So what are we gonna do? You gonna make me strengthen my body by swinging a sword a hundred times or run laps? The fuck? That would not be necessary. From what I've observed, your athletic abilities are above average. If we intend to further fortify your body, it would take more than a day or two. You may be unskilled as a mage, but you are not bad as a warrior. You must have trained hard from a young age. Well, yeah. That's that's all I was really good at. You don't have to be talented in magecraft to work out physically. That must have worked in your favor. One of the reasons you survived Lance's attack must be must be must be that very training. 
But it would not be enough for you to defend yourself. Humans are bound by limitations. Your body has not right yet reached its limit, and breaking through that limit will be difficult. That is why I will be teaching you only one thing, how to fight. What do you mean, just fight? Based on your tone, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like you'll teach me how to fight. Of course not. The techniques employed in battle cannot be learned overnight. All I can do is make certain master experiences in many battles as possible. I am not a skilled teacher, so I am baffled that you would seek my guidance. Hello? Having her sound proud about that makes it a bit awkward for me as a student. I feel like she's about to she's about to give me that fucking she's about to do to me what I did to my homeboy when I was teaching him how to play Mortal Kombat. She's just gonna beat the shit out of me a fuck ton of times until I learn how to at very least survive. <laughs> Uh, so, we're just going to have a bunch of matches. Yes, that is all, Master. Get ready to get your ass whooped. We shall not soften our blows. We will fight as if we mean to kill each other. Nigga, you will kill me! Well, you will understand after perhaps an hour. Oh, shit. Saber readies herself, gently gripping her shinai. Huh? I tilt my head wondering what she means, but I also grip my shin eye as Saber does. In that instant, damn, my vision goes black. Saber is teaching me one very le simple lesson. No matter what I do, no matter what strategy I come up with, none of it will change the outcome of a fight against someone I just don't have a chance of beating. Fuck! That hurts! It's definitely broken. If it were broken, your arm would look far worse. It may be a bad bruise, but you, you, but you will recover soon. Okay. Then let's keep going. D do you intend to continue, Shiro? It may be a bruise, but you will not move again so quickly. But you should not move again so quickly. Says the person who didn't hesitate to charge up my fucking arm. Fine, if you don't feel like it, I'll use this opportunity. Got her! Nope, obviously. Please listen to me. You were obviously fatigued. You must rest or all our training would be in vain. But it's disgraceful for you to beat me so badly when you're so obviously taking it easy on me. If I can't get you to so much as raise a brow, I'll be too frustrated to even collapse. If you want me to be surprised, I am so plenty surprised. I knew you were stubborn, but I entirely failed to anticipate the extent. Well, sorry about that. I fucking hate losing. Yes, you have demonstrated that many times, so you needn't say so. We will be taking a break, so please, put your bamboo sword down. The floor is slippery with sweat. The floor is slippery with sweat. We are not trying to carry out mock battles in extreme situations. So there is no point in carrying going while we are exhausted on, on unstable footing. Why not? I thought combat training was supposed to simulate the worst case scenarios. If not, that is even more pointless. Listen, Shiro. If you say you're gonna fight against a servant, doing so will be pointless unless you are in peak condition, having the best footing and prepared path to retreat. Unless the conditions are perfect, you will not be able to fight against a servant. Your desire to fight while you are in the worst possible state is foolish in itself. So what you're saying is I shouldn't have even bothered fighting, trying to fight in situations like this. Exactly. In a situation like this, there is no miracle which would save you, Shiro. Your best way to fight should be to pre fully prepare yourself, then pursue the best course of action in a given situation. I slump against the wall and slowly slide down the floor. Woo! I exhale. Air should be what I feel coming from my lungs, but instead there's only heat. Ah, shit! Well, my body may be throbbing with pain. I glanced towards the clock on the wall. It's a little past 11 o'clock. We started around 9, so we've been sparring for about two hours. During the first hour, I was just getting my ass whooped. Saber struck suddenly, then I blacked out. I woke up thinking I'd be more careful, then I just got knocked right back out. 
After getting beaten up repeatedly, my body seemed to get used to it. Or maybe my anger just triggered some rat in power, but eventually I did manage to block the first blow. The problem came after that. Here's a thought. Would humans dare to or be able to fight back against an opponent who is so much stronger and more skilled? You fucking demon. The answer is no, because I blacked out the instant I flinched. After that, it was just a repeated show of a cat cornering a rat. If no matter how I tried to block the attack, I was just going to fail mortally, I was just going to fall mortally wounded, then I had no chance choice but to attack in desperation. Of course, she deflected my attacks easily and knocked me out. But as I got used to it, I started getting enough time and awareness to into it that the next attack would kill me. So I had just enough time to think to myself, fuck. Guess in a general sense, I was getting into the swing of things. So after that, I went on the defensive. My intuition is telling me there'll be better days. I sit in silence and found my- Shut, shut stop. My intuition kept- my, Fuck. My intuition kept streaming that the next attack would knock me out. So I tried to avoid it like any living thing would. I managed to parry Saber Shinai attacks as they rained down upon me. And I waited for an opening to counterattack. She, she struck a fatal blow. I managed to stand up and think that next time I last longer. <laughs> I was just going in the fence before she could strike since I couldn't hold out anyway. And that went on for two hours. I'm not sure this is going to make me stronger, <laughs> but I do think it's helping me get used to fighting. Practice so I'm neither confused nor too calm to face the enemy. All I'm doing is teaching myself that a single mistake, teaching myself that I'm a single mistake away from death. But if you ask me if I thought this was meaningless, I'd say no. With no effective weapon to use, the feeling of constantly being on edge is the most important thing I have. Back up, nigga! A job well done. Are you hurt anywhere, Shiro? Fucking jump scare. The next thing I know, Saber is right next to me. I'm so exhausted, I'm dripping sweat all over the floor. Saber isn't even breathing hard. It'd be hard to find anywhere that doesn't hurt at this point. You really didn't hold back, Saber. I actually felt extraordinary having you just come at me without even having a chance of defending myself. I have to admit, I'm saying that entirely because I'm a sore loser. Yes, I did try to bring myself down to your level, but I also tried to show you no mercy. No real battles will ever involve making things easy for you. Yeah, thanks for this training. I think I can calmly deal with the Doberman running at me with his leash off. Then again, I wouldn't be good enough yet if it's just a Doberman. So I'll still need training. I'm in a moment of honest reflection. I've always thought I'd train myself more than the average person. But now I'm ashamed for throwing in the towel with just two hours of sparring with Saber. That is not true. Your attacks were all quite powerful. I was so enthused by your efforts that I forgot to strike back at times. Oh. I'm suddenly embarrassed again. For a while, we've just been two people sparring with our Shinai with no thought given to the man and, the, and a woman. But now she's caught me off guard. Uh, uh hold on. I'm, I'm gonna go drink me some water. Don't worry, bro. I got you. Alright, let's get back to it. Water. I will fetch you some. Please, stay here and rest. Saber goes to get some water. Close one. Huh? Close? What was close? My cock was close to erection. Oh, hell no. Hey, you just saw a fucking top view of my head. I know what you're Ball thinking. Adding. I know exactly what you're thinking. Why? Right? Like X squared Stop talking. Hairline. Like, shut, shut up about my hair. I drank the water Saber brings me. It must still be break time, and Saber's sitting formally in a kneeling position. Real niggas sit crisscross applesauce. Saber is so beautiful when she does that kind of thing. I'm not saying that as a man finding a woman attractive, but because I find her beautiful as a human being. She definitely is. It's still strange to think that she is Saber, a servant, and someone dedicated to fighting. Right now, there's only me and Saber. This might be a good opportunity for me to strike up a conversation, so I'll ask.
Let me look at the flow chart. Okay, so there is a chance at a, at a romance shit. Okay, let's see. Alright, look, nigga, you're not getting your secret blade technique. That's not happening. You're fucking weak. The reason to fight, I want to know why she seeks the Holy Grail. I, okay, I feel like that would be... That, that could be the heart. I feel like the heart is between these two right here. But at the same time, Saber did say, like... She doesn't want to tell us about her past because if we got caught up in like a mind reading or a, or, or a um, mind control shit, then we wouldn't be strong enough to fight back against it. And we would blab about her techniques. I'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm a just, I'm a just, if I choose the wrong one, I'm gonna go back and see like if, if things go fucking horrible, we might end up going through all of these bitches, but Okay, I want to honestly, because I'm going to start with this first, because I do want to know why she wants the Holy Grail. First, let's see if that's right. Fuck yeah, I'm the fucking GOAT, nigga. I'm the GOAT, nigga. I'm the GOAT, nigga. Why does she want to fight so much? I might, I might be able to understand her convictions a little more if I find out why she wants the Holy Grail. Can I really ask her that? Saber, can I ask you something? Yes, what is it, Shiro? Well, there's something I forgot to ask. You're lending me your power because you want the Holy Grail, right? So, what is your wish for the Holy Grail? Brick. I fucking missed, okay. Why I seek the Holy Grail? Will you be satisfied if I simply tell you that I want it? The Holy Grail is an omnipotent vessel. There is no wish that cannot be granted once you attain it. One should hardly need a reason for seeking such a thing. That's fair. It's a little underwhelming though. No, that's not what I'm asking. Seba, you're dodging the question. Damn, he called her the fuck out. Shiro, that's... I'm not asking why you're seeking it. I want to know the wish you weren't granted. But if you don't want to tell me, you don't have to. Wishes aren't always something to be shared. Saber closes her mouth embarrassed. I'm not surprised. Saber didn't form a contract with me to help me. Masters are the only ones who can obtain the Holy Grail. So she is only here to assist with that. And that's why she's hesitant to tell me her wish. But most of all, I don't want her I don't I don't want I don't want to hear her tell me about her selfish wish. So I shouldn't have asked. Besides, it's disrespectful for someone without a clear wish to ask about someone else's wish. Shiro, are you commanding me as my master? That catches me off guard. Saber turns to look at me, her gaze is serious as her tone. No, I'm not. I didn't mean it that way. I was just curious. Sorry for asking such a dumb question. No. As a servant, I do need to disclose my desires to my master. Shiro. I seek the Holy Grail to fulfill a certain obligation. I desire the Holy Grail's power to fulfill the responsibility I failed to see through to the end of my lifetime. She looks straight at me. I see no deceit in her eyes. Fulfill an obligation. And when you say the lifetime, do you mean before you became a servant? Yes. In all honesty, I am uncertain of my own, own intentions. Perhaps I only desire to do things over. Saber looks down quietly. For a moment, she looks like a lost child seeking repentance. Okay. I'm actually relieved. I was worried you're gonna say something like Tosaka would say, like world fucking domination. Rin would get it. Rin would be angry if she heard that. But she is not the type to say such a thing. She may use the Holy Grail for herself, but her wish for death would certainly not bring chaos upon the world. You think so? I still think she probably shouldn't be the one to get it. <laughs> I nod to myself. All the while, Saber watches me, her expression gentle. This conversation ends here. I should have never brought it up. 
The move between the two of us eases thanks to the mention of Tosaka, and I decided it'd be best not to pry. But the ache in my heart still remains. Even though I was relieved that no Saber's wish was not a materialistic one, I felt there was still something amiss with it. Anyway, now that we've talked a bit, my body's cooled down, so we should get back to training. Saber, let's go again. I've had a chance to rest. Are you sure? You do seem to have cooled down, but you also appear to be in pain. It's fine, just bruises, so I can deal with it. Besides, I'm healing automatically now anyway. But if it gets worse, this training will be pointless. I believe we should wait longer and see. It's fine. I want to do more before Tosaka comes home. I wouldn't want to see me in this state. I understand. It would not do to have Ren, who will eventually become our enemy, learn about your abilities. Reckless though it may be, I suppose we should pick up the pace a bit. Saber picks up her shin eye up from the floor. But then, a really out of place sound echoes through the dojo. What the fuck was that? I need a drink, bro. I need a drink. That shit scared the fuck out of me. I'm not gonna lie. My heart jumped. <laughs> My heart jumped. Uh, uh, Saber. I think her stomach is growling. That was a stomach growl? This bitch is an alien. It seems I am hungry. I had not noticed engrossing our training as I was. Yeah, now that you mention it, it's lunchtime. I can't blame her for her stomach growling. I'm not that hungry yet, but if Saber is, we should have lunch. And if during that time I heal more, that's even better. Hey, it's lunchtime anyway. I'll go buy some groceries so you can rest in the living room. Shiro, don't be fucking stupid. Take Saber with you. Shiro, if you are going out, I will accompany you. I'll be fine. I'm just going to the shopping district nearby. No one would attack me in broad daylight. And you might just attract more attention if you did come with me. Oh yeah, say that to a fucking assassin. I mean, assassin wouldn't do that, but you get what I'm saying. Like, you know, somebody with like the capabilities of an assassin can. Are you sure it will not be dangerous? I'm sure. Just wait here. I'll be back. This nigga Shiro pisses me off. Stop being so damn stupid, nigga. Oh my goodness. I grab my wallet and head out. It doesn't take more than 10 minutes to get to the shopping district by bike. The bicycle I take from the garage today is Unit 2. You know when it's still parked in front of Ryudo Temple. I bike down the hill. I haven't gone to the shopping district midday on the weekday since I was a kid. The intersection is packed with housewives returning from midday shopping. They're coming from the neighborhood shopping center Sakura and I frequent. I finished buying a bag of groceries, enough food to make lunch for the t for, for two and a light snack. I don't buy anything for dinner since Osaka's in charge of, of that tonight, but I do buy enough bread for four for tomorrow's breakfast. I don't know how to make strawberry jam, so I reach for the cheapest. Well, no, that might get some complaints. So I go for an expensive jar instead. Damn, this is eating into my wallet. Why the hell do I have to spend a thousand yen on something so sugary? I load the groceries onto my bike as I grumble, but then, I feel someone tugging at me from behind. Turn around wondering who it is. I knew it! Standing there is a silver-haired little girl. Oh, snap! Yeah. What? Hey, 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 back up! Back up! I got the Glock on me right now! I'll bust a cap in your ass! I stumble backward, knocking over my bike. While I brace myself, the girl just looks up at me and with a smile. What? I can't sense as much of a hint of animosity or murderous intent from her. To top it all off, the little girl says, I'm glad to see you alive, big brother. She looks so happy. The hell? She's definitely Berserker's master. She's the master of the monster who almost tore me in half with a single blow. 
Not the sort of person I'd expect to just run into in the shopping district in the middle of the day. You're not planning to fight here, are you? Why would you say something so silly? We're not supposed to fight while it's still light out? The little girl pouts. She's certainly acting like the little girl she seems to be. I have no idea what she must be thinking. I can at least sense that she doesn't pose any threat, though. Your Iliasville von Einsberg. You can call me Ilya for short. What's your name? Me? I'm Shiro Emiya. Shiro Emiya? That's a tongue twister. No one's ever said it like that. If it's hard to remember, just call me Shiro. That's my first name. Shiro? That's easier. Shiro, huh? Yep, it has a nice ring to it. It's simple, but also kind of haughty at the same time. Iliasville looks at me suggestively. Don't fucking look at me like that, you child. I don't get down with that. Do I look like P. Drizzy to you? I find myself shifting my weight so I can be ready to run it at an instant, purely by instinct. She is Berserker's master. If it gets in her head, she could probably just order him to crush me along with the florist next time. You don't have to be so tense, Shiro. I left Berserker at home today. You didn't bring Saber with you either, so we're even. Iliasville looks up at me cheerfully. Well, I'm not sure even is the right word. You can probably still beat my ass. Hey, let's talk. There's so much I wanted to talk to you about. What a sweetheart. The little girl tugs on my arm as if she were taking her father's hand. Wait, 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 wait. What's the big idea? Is this some weird new strategy you, you thought up? What do you mean? I just want to talk. Kids makes friends and talks with them all the time, right? That, that may be true, but that doesn't apply to us. We're both masters. And we've already fought each other before. Like, aren't we enemies? The fuck? That's not true. I don't have any enemies. The other masters are more like pests to me. But if you're good, I might let you go. She smiles wide as she says this. Ah, just stay back, okay? What's wrong with you? Nigga, you have the person who's capable of murdering you with ease. Trying to be your friend and let you survive. Innocently. You better take advantage of this. If you're lucky, you might be able to convince her to let Tosaka live too. Like, come on. I jerk my arm to throw Iliasville hand off. She's about to fall. She nearly flaws flat on her back because of how hard I shook her off. Oh crap, Ilya. I don't know why I did that. Next thing I know, I'm reaching for Iliasville. Ah, oh, her name is too long. Uh, Ilya's waist. And try to catch her before she falls to the ground. I lower Ilya to the ground without saying a thing. Ilya is silent. I don't know what to say to I don't know what to say myself, so I just stand there looking down at Ilya. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> well, this is awkward, guys. So awkward, in fact. I'm about to just turn and leave. But then. Uh-uh, don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. Why? D do you hate me or something? No. She asked with the same glow in her red eyes. Guys, I'm scared. Guys, I'm scared. <laughs> Guys, I'm scared. <laughs> the, the same red glow in her eyes that she had when she spoke to me the other night when she was with Berserker. A chill runs down my spine. I sensed no danger earlier, but she just reminded me that she's still Berserker's master. If I cross her, I'm dead. I'd never be able to face Saber if I died in vain here. And everyone in the shopping district would get dragged into this as well. Yeah, that's a safe bet. Ilya is willing to use her powers anywhere. Fine, you just want to talk, right? I'll do what you want then. So, will that be alright, Ilya? Yeah, then let's go to the park. I passed by it earlier and there was nobody there. 
Ilya skips off toward the park. Come on, hurry! If you don't, I'll leave you behind, Shiro! What a sweetheart. What is... <laughs> she over here dancing. <laughs> Ilya spins around as she runs to the shopping district. She really did go ahead without me. I'm more moved than I am confused. Apparently, once you promise Ilya something, she treats it as an absolute truth. And that's why she just skipped off so happily. It's also why, even though she left me behind, I don't even consider taking this opportunity to run for it. I'd already promised I was going to walk with her, and she clearly trusts that. What's with her? She sure is unstable. But then again, I haven't yet gotten to an age where I'm so cynical as to betray a little girl's trust. Ilya and I are the only two in the park a little ways from the shopping district. Kids are in school at this hour, so maybe the park's not as popular anymore. Our conversation begins in a tense, wintry air of the park. So let's talk! What do you want to talk about? Do you want to know about Saber? Huh? About Saber? Why? We're masters. Don't you want to get information about the other servants? I don't want to talk about that kind of stuff. I'll get bored if we don't talk about something funner. I don't really find anything particularly boring, but okay. What do you think is fun? I don't know. I haven't really talked to people much, so I don't know what to talk about. So you brought me out here not knowing what to talk about. Didn't anyone t teach you to think before you act? Like They didn't, did they? Then from now on, you're going to be a proper thoughtful adult. No thanks, I'll leave all that to you, Shiro. Isn't it a man's responsibility to escort a lady? So why don't you have to follow you? She smiles and leans against my shoulder. She doesn't seem like she's being touchy-feely. If anything, it's like a small animal huddling against something to stay warm. So adorable. Huh? Now that I'm paying more attention, she does look cold. Ilya, are you cold? Uh, yeah, I am. I don't like the cold. She breathes out a puff of white mist. Though she says she doesn't like the cold, she seems enchanted by her misting breath. I see. It's a lot colder than usual today. We'll just have to endure the cold for now, but... Where did you come from? Your name sounds like well, sounds kind of like a noble or something. I'm not kind of a noble, I am a noble. I was born in an old castle owned by the Einsburn family. It was always cold and snowing, so I'm used to it being cold like this. You were born in a cold country. Shouldn't you be used to the cold then? Yes, but I just don't like it. I like it warm much better. Don't you like it warm too, Shiro? Yeah, obviously. I'd rather it be warm than cold. I know. That's why I like to stay inside and keep warm when it's cold out. But I like snow. It's white and father said it was like my hair. I clap my hands together in wonderment. That is not a word. Now that she mentioned it, I realized something. I don't know what Ilya reminded me of. But if, but, if, but if ever there was a thing such as a snow fairy, it probably looked like her. Your dad's pretty clever. Your hair is like snow, soft and white. Right? I'm proud of my hair. I got it from mother and it's the only girly thing about me. Ilya giggles joyfully. Seeing her acting this way leaves me numb. If I hadn't already seen her myself, I'd never believed this girl could be Berserker's master. What about you, Shiro? Did you get anything from your dad? Don't say a magic crest, okay? I want to know what you got from your dad as his son, not as a master. Uh, me. Guess the last thing I got from him was a house. Before that was my name, and the first thing I got was... A chance at living again when I was about to die. I was the only one Kirisuku managed to save in that fire 10 years ago. Let's see. I didn't get any physical features like you did from your parents. But I think I got plenty of things that were just as good. 
Ilya looks delighted as if it was a story about her. Who wouldn't be happy seeing a smile like that? From, from what you just said, you didn't get his magic crest. That's weird. Does that mean you're not a master? Huh? Well, I'm an apprentice mage without a magic crest, but I am a master. Now that you mention it, you, you're a master, which makes you a mage, right? Huh? I'm not a mage, I'm a master. I was never taught magecraft. Huh? Then you didn't inherit your parents' magic crest? But I thought your family was a prominent one, so you have a castle and all. That's true. But you don't need a magic crest to be a master. So that's why I'm a master. Ilya tilts her head in confusion. Huh? Now I'm confused too. Ilya's words seem off. It feels like we're each having a different conversation here. Hey, Ilya, let me ask you something. Where do you live? It sounds like you came here just for the Holy Grail War. Does that mean you're living in a hotel right now? Well, for starters, it'd be bad if she didn't have a guardian. Letting a child like her come to Japan on her own is just terrible parenting. Hotel? Like a vacation villa? Yeah, I guess so. Not a house, but somewhere you stay. Then yes! Do you see that big forest over there? There's a western-style mansion my grandfather's grandfather built over there. I was told that the Einsberg family's master stayed there for the Holy Grail War. Ilya points west. Yeah, there's a deep forest in the mountains there. The place hasn't been developed yet. It takes about an hour to get to that forest by car. Did you come all the way from there alone? Yeah, I snuck out today. Sella and Lace may be my maids, but they're so annoying. I came all the way to Japan, so I think I could so I so I think I could go out and do some things. I may have always wanted to, I may have always gotten Fuck! I may have always gotten what I wanted, but I've been shut in my room all this time, so this should be my reward. You were locked up in your room. Yeah, I wasn't allowed outside when it snowed because it would be bad for my body. That's why I usually played in my room. But I'm fine. It's not as cold here as in the, as the castle, so I'm fine by myself. Ilya beams proudly. She swings her legs back and forth, seeming to genuinely enjoying herself. I find myself reaching into my grocery bag. I take out the dorayaki, the Japanese pancake sandwich filled with red bean paste I thought I'd give this I bought to give the saber. And without knowing why, I hand it to Ilya. Want it? It's not the fanciest thing, but it's good. What's this? Food? Yeah. I'm not a big fan of sweets, but this is the only exception. This was a this was a favorite tea snack my old man and I shared. Um so, you're giving this to me? Yeah. It's not as good as- It's not as good as you even- Fuck. It's not as good if you even- Fuck. It's not as good- Fuck. It's not as good if you eat it alone, so like- Fuck. It's not as good if- Fuck. It's not as good- Fuck! Damn! I can't read! Drink! Just get a drink! Yeah. It's not as good if you eat it alone, so let's eat it together. I hand her the dorayaki. Ilya ha fuck! Uh, Hand of the Doriaki. Ilya hesitates but takes the unfamiliar snack. Okay, thanks! She happily takes a bite of the Doriaki. She practically devours the thing. Damn! Slow down! The food ain't gonna run away! I nibble my Doriaki and try to stop myself from being overwhelmed by the shocking thought I've just had. I don't believe myself. For some reason I can't understand. I just found myself thinking it'd be nice to have a little sister like her. But honestly, I think Ilya is too innocent. She might really be an innocent young girl who hasn't learned the difference between good and evil. Honestly, I can't even begin to imagine how a mage family raises a child. But I know without a doubt Ilya wasn't raised in a normal environment. So Sokka may act the way she does, but she's a mage at heart. 
She understands the gravity of the Holy Grail War and knows that the killings between masters are murder. But this girl may have become a master without really appreciating what it means to kill people. I haven't been talking to her long, but I don't think Ilya is the sort who would choose to kill anyone. If that's the case... Ilya, there's something serious I want to talk with you about. But then, Ilya suddenly raises her head as if someone's just called for her. Ilya, what's wrong? Did something happen? Yeah, I need to go home. Berserker woke up. She jumps off the bench. Ilya runs out of the park without so much of a goodbye. She disappears in an instant. I go back to the house. I decide to keep quiet about meeting Ilya. This is the sort of thing I should be sharing right away and I know it, but I don't feel like talking about it. Ilya wasn't acting like a master in the park. We talked about trivial things and casually parted ways. So I hesitate to bring up what happened today to the others. I feel bad for keeping secrets, but I don't want I don't want to, I don't want to think of the little girl I met today as my enemy. After lunch with Saber, we resume our training at the dojo. Next thing I know, it's time for dinner. I rest, fatigued after my training with Saber, so I take a bath to rest the sweat off. By the time I head to the living room, dinner is ready. I'm a little moved. It's really nice to come out of the bath and find dinner ready without doing anything. Emiya, it's dinner time. Why are you standing there like a fucking dumbass? And yet, why does she have to ruin the moment? Nothing. It's dinner, right? I'm ready to eat. Where's Saber? I thought Saber went to your room, Shira. You didn't see her? That's weird. She was here a minute, a second ago. Maybe you two miss each other because this place is as big as a hotel. Fine, I'll go get Saber. You should just... You should go to the bathroom one more time. You didn't dry your hair properly. Ah, shit, you're right. Alright, then I'll leave Saber to you. I waved, I waved until Sokka and stepped back into the hallway. Saber's in the bathroom. As Osaka said, the Yemiya house was built with all kinds of passages and corridors. One of the most notable examples of this is the various routes of the bathroom. You can get there from my room or the living room. I head into the bathroom. I don't like to use a dryer, so I'll just use a towel I used earlier to dry my hair. HELL YEAH! HELL YEAH! HELL YEAH! HELL YEAH! Shit off my screen, nigga. Yeah, hold on. I need the color back. And in that moment, I forget everything that happened today. Shit off my screen. Shit off my screen. Burn this into my eyes. I prefer if they lost a the damn towel, but this is fine. Shiro, I suppose you must be here to take another bath, but I am doing so at the moment. I would appreciate if you could wait until later. I need to explain myself. I need to explain that this is all an accident, but my mind has gone completely blank. The sight in front of me is enough to erase everything that's happened today from my mind. Shiro, were you in the bath so long that all your blood rushed to your head? Even if your ears are bright red, even your ears are bright red, if you need to cool off, I suggest you head on to the veranda. No, no, yeah, I, I do that, but before I do, I, sh I should apologize. I avert my gaze from Saber and try to calm my pounding heart. This was an accident! Well, actually, there's not really much room for me to explain myself now that we've run into each other like this, so go on and get mad at me, Saber. I try to keep my eyes averted and calm myself down at the same time. Saber thinks for a while, then says, Shiro, please raise your head. I do as I'm told. No! Wait, why are you still like that? You have nothing to apologize for. I wish a ticket or two was nothing for you to worry about, even having seen what you have. Come again? I have told you before, gender is meaningless to servants. Seeing my body may have made you panic, but as I have said, I am a servant before I am a woman. As such, a consideration is unnecessary. What? What is Saber saying? Even if Saber insists, 
the fact of the matter and matter of fact remains that she is a girl. But then again, I don't think it'd be the case. But could Saber be? Let me ask you something. Are you not the least embarrassed about changing in front of me, Saber? Why should I be embarrassed about such a thing? I figured as much. It doesn't matter that Saber doesn't care though. I really do. Sarah, just let me apologize. If something like this happens, you can do whatever you want with me. All right? I do a quick 180 and rush awkwardly out of the dressing room. Saber stares at me oddly as I leave. My fucking goodness. We finished dinner. It was probably a typical dinner, except it didn't feel that way. I've lost my appetite since the incident in the bathroom. So cold. I had opened a window from the veranda to let the outside wind cool my head, but I need to stop. I'm gonna catch a cold if I keep this up. Shiro, there you are. Saber, did you have something? What the? Damn, nigga, keep texting me and shit. On oh, fuck. I'm throwing my damn phone over there. I'm sick of this nigga. Recording and blowing my shit up. Saber, did, did you did you have something? No, but I thought you did. I thought Rin promised to teach you magecraft tonight. Oh shit, I smacked my forehead. I completely forgot. Thanks, I'll head over there right away. I rush to the outbuilding and head upstairs. I knock on the door to the guest room that Osaka is taking up a company scene. Shiro, I have my hands full, so just come on in, it's fine. Osaka's voice sounds from inside the room, but she sounds a little unnerved. She doing heroin? Hold on, bruh, she over here doing heroin. Hold on, bruh, nah, that's fucking... There's too much going on in this fucking episode. Saber once again. Saber beat my ass. Continues to be a bad bitch. Tosaka is doing fucking heroin or temp V. I don't fucking know. Ilya is a sweetheart. This episode is too eventful. I walk in to see Tosaka holding a jewel in one hand, a syringe in the other, and a handkerchief in her mouth. I have questions, Tosaka. Hold on, I'm almost done with Hana Hana. She sticks a needle in her arm as she speaks, her mouth full. She draws blood into the syringe. The sucker slowly drips blood from the syringe onto the jewel, then grips it tightly. A wave of vertigo washes over me. I can tell it was a ripple of magical energy. Even after all that, it's only at 30%. Guess I'll have to make do with just a nine I have. Tosaka slumps his shoulders in disappointment and puts the stone back into the ju into a jury box. Tosaka, I, I came here to learn from you, as promised. I fucking missed. But before we get to that, I'm curious about what I just saw. Why are you shooting up in my house? Yes, I was waiting for you. You fortified your body with Saber during the day, right? They wanted to train your mind at night. Osaka seems happy, ready to teach. Saber says she wasn't good at teaching, but I'm guessing this will be the total opposite. Anyway. So, what should we start with? You mentioned that you can only use strengthening magecraft. Actually, before we start, I need to know or else it's gonna bother me. What the hell were you just doing? Sticking yourself with a needle is dangerous. Oh, I was just making magic bullets. My family style of magecraft uses the flow and conversion of power. Whenever I have the time, I transfer my magical energy into other objects. Wait, what are magic bullets and what's the point of transferring magical energy? Magic bullets are exactly what they sound like. Bullets filled with magical energy. Have you ever heard stories where jewels contain human emotions and thoughts? Jewels in general can easily store magical energy. But it seems like my family has always been real, really well suited to the practice. If you don't do anything for, say, a day, you wind up with an excess of magical energy. So I put that extra energy in the jewels. 
I repeat this for days, months, and even years. And that turns the jewels themselves into magecraft. The jewels obviously have limited capacity, so I can't control magical energy outside myself. The magical energy inside the jewels work like an ignition source to instantly activate a large-scale magecraft. So you're saying you fill these jewels with your own magical energy as a backup? Backup? Like combat support? That's close, but not quite right. It's more like stuffing something into a disposable pack. So it's like you're temporarily expanding a computer hard disk. That's amazing. You'll be able to use as much magecraft as you want with that kind of skill. Hard disk? No idea what that is, but it's not as great as you think. The moment I infuse a jewel with magical energy, the magical energy is bound by the jewel's attributes, which limits how I can use it. Yeah, but magical energy never ceases to surprise me. I didn't know you could store it like that. I don't know the mages do something so useful. The ability to store magical energy in something outside of yourself is unique. Even your strengthening magecraft involves infusing your magical energy into another object, right? Things that pass magical energy typically change, using up that magical energy. The effects of magecraft are instantaneous and never permanent. What my family does, when my, what my family does is make it so that magical energy flows into jewels, where they become permanent objects. Other mages can do something similar to their own bodies. That's what magic crests are, a kind of backup magecraft mages possess. Magic crest? Oh yeah, secrets that parents pass down to their children. I don't have anything like that, so I'm kind of clueless about them. Wait, what did you just say? Huh? Well, I said I don't have a magic crest. My old man had one, but I didn't inherit it. So Sokka catches her breath, but then the next minute she seems to understand. No wonder you're such an amateur. So you really started from zero. Then I guess there's no helping it. So Sokka, haven't you known I don't have a magic crest for a long time now? Of course not. If I knew, I would have never let you go out and do stuff on your own. Sure, I knew you weren't fully trained, but if you don't have a magic crest, you aren't even a mage. She huffs and looks at me, seeming to be complaining. But what is this? Her voice sounds almost warm, like she's a little bit relieved, like she's jealous I'm not a mage. Well, whatever. This just means I have to teach you everything from scratch. But since you know what magic crests are, you know what a mage is. Okay, sit over there, Shiro. I need you to really pay attention because this is a, this is important stuff. Right here? Alright, go ahead. I brace myself and look straight at Tosaka. Tosaka nods approvingly, satisfied by my show of seriousness. I'll start with something simple. You already know that you need magical energy to use magecraft. You can actually refer to anything that can activate magecraft as magical energy. There are, endless there are endless varieties of magical energy. Some may use magecraft via their own means, while some may do it by paying a price of some sort. You at least know that, right? Yeah, you're talking about mana and ode, right? Mana is magical energy that's found throughout the world. Ode is magical energy an individual can create themselves. Yep, yep, good job. Let me start by explaining the types of magecraft that can that use mana. Listen, mages who don't have so much history, like you, employ something that's already that has already taken form to use magical energy. It's a method based on long-established systems of rituals using offerings to make contact with mystics. It's called formal craft, a negotiation technique where a mage prepares a compensation of sorts to make a deal because their own power is insufficient. This way, even a castle with weak magical energy can use magecraft. They don't need to use their own magical energy because they're borrowing it from elsewhere, from mana, so the caster only has to perform a ritual. But you need knowledge to pull something like this off. You're not at the right level to do something like this. Besides, something reeking of blood probably wouldn't be your style anyway. 
Yeah, I wouldn't want to do stuff like sacrifice chickens or pray for a whole night inside a magic circle. Right? Then let's move on to talk about, oh, magical, ma mage crap that uses mage's own power. This probably doesn't bear mentioning, but it is a basic setup for using the mage craft you and I practice. Your strengthening mage craft only uses your magic circuits without using anybody else's power, right? I know. It seems she's getting into the nitty gritty stuff now. Right. The magic circuits that function to create your own magical energy are, her are, are hereditary trait passed down through generations. Magic circuits are forged over many generations and get more powerful as they're passed down to the next generation and so on. The child of a mage family is already fit to use magical energy because of this. It may not be fair, but you and I had different starting points. I know that. It doesn't bother me. Keep going. I wasn't too worried about that either. But whatever. Anyway, other than magic circuits, mage families also have secret mage crafts that they cultivate over generations. It's similar to my jewels you saw earlier. Once a certain magecraft is mastered, a mage can physically hold that magecraft. Do you know the feeling of getting a hold of magecraft even though it's typically shapeless and simply devised? I don't, but I'm guessing it's like it becomes a part of your body. Bingo! Magecraft that goes beyond the realm of principle and becomes part of- Magecraft that goes beyond the realm of principle it becomes a part of you then becomes tangible. It's a feat that authenticate, authentic, authenticate an otherwise unstable magecraft, and at some and at, at the same time, it becomes a testimony of that mage's existence. And when a mage is on the brink of death, they pass down their great accomplishments to their successor in the form of a crest. It's their way of telling their successor to go further, to places they were unable to reach, and that their crest may be of some use to them. Though to be honest, both the handing down of the crest and the one receiving it know, know it's of no help. What are you saying that something so awesome- are you saying something so awesome is useless? It is useful! An ordinary mage would consider a single crest to be like a security blanket. It's that helpful. But then again, it's like getting a car. No matter how fast it is on the road, it's never going to take you to the moon. Huh? Just forget that part. Let's move on. You might know this already, but this crest is what's called the magic crest. The head of the mage family spends their entire life completing their mage craft and makes it into a complete crest that passes down to their descendants. The descendant completes another mage craft and adds it to the crest, which gets passed down to the next descendant. The magic crest gets more complex as it passes down from generation to generation, but it's also a constraint mages can't escape. What you're saying is that the entire history of a mage family is recorded in these magic crests. No, that's not it. Family records are recorded in books. Magic crests only contain magecraft. It can cast spells on its own. Or it can let you use magecraft you haven't mastered yet. In simpler terms, it's like having magic circles engraved on your body. But doesn't that mean you can engrave the crest onto anyone? If magic circles are all you need, then you can draw as many as you want, as long as you know the shape. That's not how it works. Magic crests are like living things. It's more like transplanting an organ. There's only one organ, so you can't split it amongst other people and co or copy it. There's no point in splitting a heart in half because it just stopped working, right? Oh yeah, you have a point. Does that mean you also have a crest implanted in you too? Implanted is a pretty backwards way to put it, if I do say so myself. In my case, it's on my left arm. It covers my entire arm from my shoulders to my hand. It doesn't show up as long as I'm not using it, so I don't have to hide it like with command spells. So that's why a mage family only has a single heir. If a family has multiple siblings, typically any not chosen to be a successor would not be taught magecraft and would instead live an ordinary life. 
the magic crest can be passed down to them. So there's no point in them being a mage. No point in them being a mage. Yeah, Shinji said that too. I get it. So that's why Sakura wasn't taught any mage craft. Right. But the crest inheritance stopped a few generations ago in the Mado family. So I assume Shinji only learned about magecraft. Honestly, those are the most annoying sorts out there. They can't really feel what magecraft is, but they still try to use it. Damn, saying that right to me, huh? So Saka sighs and sighs a deep breath, swearing silently. Well, I suppose I, I was supposed to teach you magecraft. Fuck. Well, I suppose. Well, I was supposed to- Fuck! Well, I was supposed to teach you magecraft, but we got a little sidetracked. I need to come up with a different approach now that I know you don't have a magic crest. Let's call it a- let's call it a light- uh, fuck. Let's call it a night for now. I'll prepare some things for you tomorrow, so we'll do more then. Oh? I'll just have to trust you then. And what do you mean you're gonna prepare things? I mean a lot of things. Since you have no crest, you don't have a switch. I'm gonna go in and tamper with your body, so we'll need medicine and other tools. A chill runs down my spine. What? I'll stop if you don't want to do it. But if so, there won't be much I can teach you. Uh, well, I don't want to. But I'm still gonna ask you. W whatever you say is probably the right way to go. Yeah, man, just suck it up and let her touch you all over, man. I'd be honored. Then that's what we'll do tomorrow. Alright. Are you planning on training with Saber tomorrow too? Well, yeah. I'm concerned about the bounded field over the school. But there's still some time before it activates. I want to at least be able to fight by then. I see. Well, not that it's important to me, but it seems like you and Saber aren't getting along. Well, you managed to talk normally before dinner, but you got all quiet before dinner, but you got all quiet at dinner. I just want to check. Are you two getting along? If you two end up bickering during battle, I'm going to suffer the consequences too, you know? Uh, it's just that something happened right before dinner and now things are awkward. That's all. But I'm not sure if Saber and I really are, are really getting along. When I spent the all day dueling her, I think I got a sense of what Saber is like. I trust Saber as an ally. No question about that. But if someone asks me how I really feel about Saber and other senses, I wouldn't know how to answer. Because I... Lost all sense in that very moment. It's hard to say, but... What about you, Tosaka? Do you like Saber? I do. There's nothing about it I don't- there's nothing about her I don't like, really. She's strong, polite, and pretty. A huge difference from my Mr. Cynic. I see, so you like Saber. What? All I said was I like her- I, I, I like more about her than I don't. For being so blunt and you'll make enemies. I refuse. I've never been good with words anyway. I'd like to see them kiss. I figured as much. You're never sarcastic or cynical. I bet you think of me as loud and annoying. I do. Why would I think that? I like the way you say things. Otherwise, it wouldn't feel like it's really coming from you. Hold on. What? Crap. I might have struck a nerve. So Sokka turns away pouting. But I have to admit, I feel a little better. Even happy knowing that Tosaka likes Saber. We almost in there. The day ends. I feel a little- I, I still feel uneasy with Saber sleeping so close by, so I escape to the shed. I stop and look up at the winter sky. Not because the night is particularly beautiful. I'm just feeling the winter chill in the days, doing nothing because it calms me. I don't know how much time passed. I think I hear footsteps in the darkness. Who's there? There's no answer. Footsteps approach and I feel a piercing presence. I crouch ready to jump back at any time. Hey, I asked who's there. There's no answer. The footsteps never stop and the person finally appears before me. Oh, it's Archer! You're... 
It's the servant who fought Lancer at school the other night. The red armored knight Saber beat when she leaped over the wall. Are you Tosaka's servant, Archer? The man's lips curve upward. He smiled. Can I take that as confirmation? Something about him annoys me. For no reason I can really understand. I find myself irritated. I can't make myself like this guy. I've never talked to him before and he's, he's never attacked me before. But I realize something the instant I see his face. I can't respect this man. There's no reason for it that I can think of, but he and I aren't going to get along. I'm probably not the only one who feels like this. Archer probably feels the same way. There must be a total of three people in the world with whom I'm just completely incompatible. That's how bad it is. I wouldn't be surprised if he was irritable around me too. What do you want? That's we're gonna stay on guard until your wounds healed up. That is my intention. The moment my wounds heal, I'm putting an end to this ridiculous alliance you two formed. So I've remained a spectator all this time since I believed there was nothing for me to say to you. Don't let me stop you from spectating then. There's nothing I want to talk to you about either. As much as I would like to do that, there's just one thing I cannot overlook. I hear you don't intend to let Saber fight. What's wrong with that? My reply is impulsive. He glares. With a fair amount of hostility, Archer makes it clear he sees right through me. I knew it. Only a brat would do something like that. You wouldn't accept help from anyone. You would just do everything yourself. On top of it all, you don't want any casualties. That mentality disgusts me. What? You got no right to tell me that. I'm only doing what I think is right. You have no reason to complain. I do, actually. As a fellow servant, I understand Saber's hardship. Saber has a heavy weight to carry with a master like you. He's not lying. What really ticks me off is that I didn't want to hear this from him of all people. Fuck you! I'm not a burden to Saber. I'm gonna fight in their place, so there shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> You're definitely a burden. Are you saying she won't get hurt as long as she doesn't fight? Servants only exist to fight. Forbidding her to fight is blasphemous, though I doubt there's any point in telling you that. Having said what was on his mind, Archer falls silent. A few minutes pass. The two of us just stare at each other. I gulp. His cold stare seems to be trying to probe my insides. And then suddenly... So what's your plan, Master of Saber? The Red Knight seems calm as he asks this question. What do you mean? Do you really expect to end this war without fighting? Do you really think you'll never fight or kill anyone? I never said I won't fight. I'll fight if I need to. I see. But you won't kill anyone when you fight. Yeah, I got a problem with that? I have no intention of butting into your moronic reasons for doing what you do. I don't have the time, and I'm just not crazy enough to try. Then fuck off. Archer turns his back to me. But don't get things confused though. This champion of justice you're pretending to be. Nothing more than a cleaner. You should know that only the survivor is going to have a chance to save anyone that way. I don't know why. But it feels like Archer was just beating him up on me for no reason. Hey, what do you mean a champion of justice is just a cleaner? You should have figured it out by now. Listen, your approach won't undo a tragic death. That's the limitation you're working with. A champion of justice is someone who can only clean up a mess that's already been made. You'll never be able to save the very people you're hoping to save. That's not true. The idea that you can't save the person you're reaching out to save is wrong. An ideal is just that, an ideal. As long as you hold to that ideal, the friction between it and reality will only get more intense. That's the path you're on right now. Someday you're gonna face reality and you'll have to pay the price. The choices you've made will cost many, many lives.
You should at least be prepared. By the time you realize how narrow-minded you've been, you'll have to figure out how to fix it and whom to punish for it. If you can't do that, then I suggest you abandon both your dream and your magecraft right now. Archer disappears into the darkness. Listen! No matter what anyone does, there will always be those who can't be saved. All your ideals will let you save is the ideal itself. That is so little a human can do. But even so... Hey, what the hell are you trying to say? My question is swallowed up in the darkness. Archer is already gone, and I'm just talking to empty air. The hell's with him? He just shows up, unloaded a bunch of crap on me and disappeared. He was telling me that my thinking was too idealistic, and I'm gonna suffer for it soon. How can I decide something is wrong before I've even tried it? I'm ready. If I'm wrong, I'll just have to pay the price for that mistake with my life. That's my resolve as a mage. Archer doesn't have to remind me that. I can't stand that guy. But, something he said bothers me. No matter what anyone does, there will always be those who can't be saved. There is so little a human can do. But even so... Even so, can I keep pursuing my ideal without looking back? I muttered to myself. I felt like that's what Archer wanted to say. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and read a mod up into the next one. All right, man. Like Ilya, we like we we, we rocking with Ilya. Like she she being a, a a little sister and shit. Uh, Archer, he pulled up on some bullshit. Uh, shit. There's not really much to say about this episode, you know. We trained with Saber. We got to see some good shit, you know. I fuck with it. Saber bad as fuck. So Sokka gave us some more information. The Tiger Dojo was funny. Uh, Alien is a sweetheart. I like her. She's sweet. Damn! What is up with all these choices? But that's the end of the episode, man. I, I love y'all. Peace out. Tap in.